Okay, last but not least, part four, where we're going to talk about the use versus availability ratio. Um, this is a way of comparing what's technically available to the creature, in this case coyotes, and we define available as within the general home range against what's actually being used. This is where we can start um, figuring out if there are certain land cover types or slopes or proximity to water or roads um, that uh, a species might you know, prefer or avoid. So we're gonna define used by using the extract value to points tool again and drill down at the actual known locations of um, the coyotes and extracting what land cover type is available here. And we're gonna compare those counts against um, a quantification of the available land cover within the home range. And so again, let's talk about raster attribute tables. The land cover data is from landfire.gov. Um, the value relates to the class name field. And remember, raster attribute tables have a value and a count. They're like a histogram or a frequency, um, a frequency distribution table where um, the value is a categorical number that represents some land cover type. Um, and you're going to use that numeric value. In this case, I think it's like a four digit number. Okay, so habitat selection methods. The use is the animal location points. You're going to extract the values at those point locations. And like I said, in this case, it's going to be the vegetation type, but it could be distance to water by running the near tool on uh, water features, whether it's streams or some combination of geometries. But um, yeah, slope, elevation, aspect, soil type, these are all things that we could um, extract the values of to the point locations and then quantify what's actually available in the home range and compare them. So use is the actual value at the point locations, extract value to points, availability, is treating the habitat as a zone and summarizing uh, the breakdown of different land cover types, right? It's the ratio that we're calculating is this very simple proportional occurrence of what is used to what's available. Okay, so here's a land cover raster and you're gonna have some kind of habitat area. So what's available, you're gonna find by clipping, extract by mask, or the data management clipping tool. And what you'll get out is a new raster where you can use the count of the different uh, values, which represent the land cover types, and you can calculate a proportion. So we could go through and um, sum all the counts that are within the general area. And that's what I'd recommend using is the 95% quartile um, general home range polygon that you created earlier. Um, so sum these all up using the statistics. Take your sum and then divide each one of these counts into this. Now if we start having seven cells out of 25,000 cells, you probably don't need to get into this level of detail. What we're really interested in are you know the top 10 maybe um, land cover types. So you're going to want to make note of both the value and the land cover class names. Um, and create, um, calculate a proportion that each one of these is. It won't sum to one because, like I said, I don't need you to get into this kind of detail. Um, these are probably more accidental than anything. Okay, so um, you can do that with a field calculator. You could do it in Excel. Um, remember, you can export the tables and work them that way. You could just do it manually by typing this up into Excel just by reading it off the screen. I don't really care how you do it. Um, you don't have to calculate the percent. Um, this is an example, taking the count and dividing it into the total number of cells, multiplying it by 100 for a percentage. You can just leave it as a proportion. That's fine. Okay, so that's the availability, land cover that's available within the general home range. The used, like I said, you're going to use extract value to points tool. And let's just say there were 216 um, radio collar points. This is just an example. Um, 
the way it breaks down, oh shoot, just ignore these percents. I meant to take these out of here. But of the 216 points, extract value to points member spits out a new point table with a, a field in it. And you're going to count um, 64 of the points fell in Intermountain Basin's mixed salt desert scrub. 58 of them, or about 27%, fell on vegetation annual grassland. About 20% or 23 points fell on Intermountain's basin's big sage. Okay, so you get the point. Um, to do this, you can create a pivot table in Excel, and the instructions have a uh, step-by-step -step on how to do that. So I um, added this in here, so this is a better... A better setup. Um, one, one point fell on this greasewood flat and 70 fell on the Zurich mixed sagebrush uh, shrubland. Okay, so this is our utilized count. You could calculate um, the percent or the proportion by dividing these counts into the total if you wanted to, but um, we're going to compare these counts to the available. And the way we're going to do that is we know we've got 216 total points. We have calculated the proportion of the general area that is all these different land cover types. These are the top five. If the animals didn't have any kind of preference for where they were, they just wandered around and didn't care what kind of land cover they were standing on, we would expect 31% of the points to be on Intermountain Basin's mixed salt desert scrub. So what we want to do is calculate um, what the count would be of the available land if they didn't prefer anything. So basically that means um, multiplying 216 by 31 percent, by 42 percent, by 14 percent, by 6 percent, and 6 percent. So basically the Intermountain Basin's Mixed Salt Desert Scrub. If the, if the coyotes cared not where they were, we would expect 69 points to fall on this land cover type. We saw that 64 did. Um, if they didn't care where they were, 91 of the points should be sitting on introduced upland vegetation annual grassland, but we saw that only 58 were. This is what they were utilizing this is what's available to them. And this is what we'd expect to see if they had no preference. So just taking the, the way that the land cover is kind of partitioned within the general home range, these are the proportions of these different land cover types and then multiplied against the total number of points. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Then to calculate the preference, the preference ratio, it's simply a matter of dividing the utilized count by the expected count. Because if it's being utilized more than what we'd expect, the ratio is going to be greater than one. And anything with a preference ratio greater than one means that the animal is preferring that land cover type. So if we calculate those out, okay, so dividing those through, 64 utilized divided by the expected count, what we'd expect to see if they had no preference of 69, results in 0.92, less than one, meaning that the coyotes slightly don't prefer this Intermountain Basin's mixed salt desert scrub, but five points different out of 216, you know, this is pretty close to uh, within a margin of error. 58 points were utilizing the upland vegetation annual grassland we would have expected 91. So that's a preference ratio of 0.64. So they're very much underutilizing this upland, introduced upland vegetation annual grassland. Uh, 23 divided by 30, 0.76. So underutilizing um, Intermountain Basin's big sagebrush shrubland. One divided by 13, way underutilizing uh, this greasewood flat. But 70 utilized divided by what we'd expect to be 13, a very high preference ratio, greater than one, which means that they're um, definitely preferring this Great Basin Zurich mixed sagebrush shrubland. So value is greater than one because we're dividing, dividing the actual utilized count, what we, where we actually spotted them, divided by, by what we'd expect to see calculated from the proportions of um, 
the partitions of the land cover. Okay, I hope that that makes some sense. The instructions are going to walk you through another example just to try and help uh, kind of illustrate how this works. Um, but that's it. If you have questions, let me know.